Hi everyone, Stepan here. <clears throat> In today's video I'm going to continue the series on the King's Indian defense with the Makogono variation, which is pawn to h3 on move 5 for white which has gained popularity in recent years and it has sort of become one of the main ways for the Super Grandmasters to fight the King's Indian. And, uh, well, it goes against the normal King's Indian plans, uh, goes, uh, well, White wants to uh, prevent Black from going for his own com uh, common plans in the King's Indian, and it also has two main ideas that White wants to achieve with the move. So the first idea behind the move H3 uh, firstly, it's a flexible move, it doesn't commit to anything, uh, as opposed to f3 or knight to f3, it doesn't lead to the main lines. And you can say that, firstly, uh, this move uh, is an attempt to avoid the most theory-heavy lines in the King's Indian, so if you want to play something lightweight, let's say, something that doesn't have 20 moves of theory, then the Makogonum variation should be your choice. Uh, the first strategic idea of the move h3 is that white wants to push g4. Uh, that's fairly simple. Now, g4 serves three purposes. Firstly, it expands on the king side, gains space. Secondly, it starts an attack because uh, black is going to castle on his next move and uh, the move g4 starts a dangerous attack. And thirdly, and most importantly, the move g4 goes against black's idea of playing f5, which is black's main idea in, uh, in the king's indian in most variations. So the move f5 is going to be much harder to play after g4. Regardless of that, black is still going to go for f5 in, in almost all variations. And the second idea behind the move h3 is that it controls the square g4, which means that the bishop can now freely develop to the e3 square without being harassed by the knight. Uh, also, in some situations, bishop g4, but that's never really a plan uh, for black in, in, in the king's indian. So, knight g4 isn't possible. That means that the bishop can go to e3, and since it most often develops to the g5 square in this variation, in any case where black chases it away with h6, it can then safely uh, retreat to the e3 square. If you remember the Gligorich variation, which we already went over, which is the move bishop e3, uh, then black's main response is going to be knight g4. Uh, so this is not a possibility here. And if I had to say what I think about the variation, I think that it's not as aggressive for white, definitely not, not as aggressive as some of the main lines, but it can be more confusing for black, so in theory you could score more than with the main lines. Now, in the live book, the move h3 scores 44% for white, 33% of the games were drawn, and 23% of the games were won by black. So it's, it scores well for white. Another thing, <coughs> I'm sorry, that should be highlighted is that the move carries some of the same ideas as f3, as the same-ish variation, which is going to be the next variation I cover, uh, in that, that it stops the move uh, knight g4, of course, and helps support g4. Uh, the difference is that after f3, in the same-ish variation, your knight doesn't have its normal natural square to develop to. It usually has to go to e2 in order to develop, because the pawn is on, on f3. That would be the downside, the downside on the, of the same-ish, and the upside of the same-ish, the downside of the Makogonum variation, is that the pawn on f3 <coughs> supports your strong center defense e4, which is going to be very important. So both openings sort of have the same starting point, but uh, lead to completely different types of positions. Black uh, always responds with castles here. Uh, he can play some other moves, but castles is the only really theoretical move worth mentioning. He can play knight bd7 or c5 or e5. c5 leads to the modern Benoni in some lines, so we are not, we are not going to go over that. Any King's Indian player is going to continue with castles. And now we are going to be looking at three moves by, by white. Uh, the first move is going to be bishop g5. So developing the bishop to its most natural square, uh, anticipating the move e5 uh, in some positions, and then uh, preventing it. Uh, the other move we are going to be looking at uh, is going to be the move bishop e3, a normal developing move using the fact that the bishop can go to e3, because the knight cannot go to g4. And the third move is going to be knight f3. Uh, okay, bishop g5 is considered the main line, so we are going to go over that first. After bishop g5, one thing that I would like to mention once again, uh, same as against the Averbach system, uh, e5 is not a move here, and if you play e5, you lose the game. So e5 by black can be punished with the same trick we saw in the last video, d takes e5, d takes e5, an exchange of queens, queen d8, rook d8, and now you can either exchange here, bishop f6, bishop f6, and knight d5, winning the c7 pawn, 
or even stronger after rook takes d8 you can play the move knight d5 and black has no other choice but to play knight d7 now you can immediately take on c7 forcing the rook to b8 or you can play the move rook to d1 which is even stronger and well the position is just much better rook f8 is the best move and if that's the best move knight takes e7 rook b8 f3 restraining uh, this knight defending e4 and white has a winning edge so after the move bishop g5, e5, the most natural way for black to play is not a possibility. Black has two main moves here, c5 and knight a6. Knight b to d7 is a sideline that I would like to briefly mention. So after knight bd7, knight f3, which is almost always going to be played. And now e5, because now the knight is developed, so the same variations uh, don't work. I'm sorry, the knight is defended. d5 is going to be white's main response to e5 in these lines. And now a5 by black trying to restrain the uh, white's queenside expansion and knight to d2. Uh, knight to d2 uh, is a flexible move. Uh, it defends the e4 pawn and after knight c5 you can see that the pawn needs further support, support even though the queen is for the moment pinned to the knight. Bishop e2 developing, bishop d7, castles, h6 and now the great thing about h3, bishop e3 is possible. And after bishop e3 in some positions you are going to take on c5 with the bishop ruining the pawn structure but ruining your chances of playing b4 uh, you can also continue with knight b3 and take the c5 knight with your knight black doesn't really have much to do about that in, if, in fact that's the main line black is going to play the move knight h7 uh, trying to play the move f5 knight b3 b6 defending the knight knight c5 bc5 queen c2 and now f5 and this is the starting position of this sideline this pawn structure is going to be very common uh, where black has a pawn on c5, d6, e5, f5. This is going to be the main team of the opening. Now black has to start an attack. Uh, white for the moment has a spatial advantage, has better peace activity and has better king safety. Black sort of gave away his, his cards, but he is flexible and he can still do a lot of things. White has to be careful. But that's a sideline. I don't think that's going to happen very often. So after bishop g5, I would like to focus on c5 and uh, the move knight a6. According to some books uh, that have been through, knight a6 is the main move. According to the others, c5 is the main move. I think knight a6 is more solid. But from what I've seen, what I've seen, knight a6 uh, sort of creates closed positions, uh, as we are going to see, which are really hard to break through. So knight a6, preparing to enter the c5 square, supporting the move e5. Uh, bishop d3, and now e5. Uh, the same variations now don't work because the queen doesn't attack the queen and because the knight defends c7. Uh, the variations with bishop f6, I mean. So d5, and now you can see that the knight has the c5 square. Queen e8, this is going to be a very common maneuver in the Makogonov variation, simply unpinning. Same as in the Averbach system. And now g4. And this is the point I, I was talking about. Uh, g4 is supported by h3. Now you can see that it's twice as hard to play f5 for white. And white, uh, for black, I'm sorry, and white sort of has a space advantage on the king side, which isn't easy to utilize, but it prevents black's plans. Knight d7, still going for f5, a3, uh, stopping knight b4 and in anticipation of knight c5, preparing the move b4, f5, b4, and now, well, taking on the previous move would be incorrect. Uh, you would basically allow black too much activity, so you need to allow black to decide. After b4, uh, f4 is the main move. If you want a more active position, you can take on g4, but after h takes g4, your king is going to be in trouble. You can also take on e4, but then white's pieces have a permanent outpost, so let's say you take here. Knight takes here, now you have, you're having problems on the uh, f6 square. You can never undermine the pawn structure with c7 because d6 is going to drop and this is just unadvisable. So after b4, f4 should be the main move and white should play f3. And now you can see what I was talking about. The position is very closed, very fixed and it's really hard for either side to break through. So what I found in the main lines of the Makogono with knight a6 is that most games tend to end in a draw because it's simply impossible to win. Uh, Black's main move here is in fact c5. After c5, white, of course, doesn't want to take. Um, he should play the move b5. And after b5, knight c7, knight g2, a6, a4, b6. This is now this is now just a dead position. I mean, it's, it's hard to do anything. The a file is going to open. 
but the white king is going to go either to d2 or f2. Uh, the rook is going, the h rook is going to come to the a file. If anybody sh should have an advantage, it should be white, because his bishop is better than black's bishop. His pawns are on the light squares, and black has all of his pawns on the dark squares. So, I would say that I would say that white should hold an edge because of this bishop, but generally it should be equal. So after bishop g5, if you are looking for uh, a maneuvering game with uh, every tempo not being as important, with pawn breaks to come and a closed position, then play the move knight a6. If you want a more aggressive game, then play the move c5. c5 is, according to some, as I said, the main line. After c5, uh, d5 should be played. And by the way, if you remember the Averbach system, c5 was the main response to bishop g5. So the idea is the same here. After d5, e6, once again, uh, the same idea, undermining the structure. And if you remember the main line in the Averbach, where the bishop goes to f4, I believe that's still possible, possible here after d5 to play the move uh, h6. But the thing is that now... Since the pawn is on h3, the bishop doesn't have to go to f4, it can now go to e3, and it doesn't really work. So after d5, black doesn't really bother with h6, he, he just plays the move e6, undermining the structure. Bishop d3 developing, e d5, c d5, rook e8. And now we can see this, the makings of a Benoni structure with the weakness on, on d6. And this became sort of a weird Benoni, and I... With white would want this maneuver to happen, knight f3, knight d2, knight c4. Um, I would also want to play the move a4, if there's a possibility for that to stop the move b5. Basically, whenever black plays a6, I'm going to play a4 to stop that. And you're going to be playing against the d6 pawn. Black, on the other hand, has to seek activity. So knight f3, c4. This is the only move to stay active and not allow... Uh, the, the white pieces to overrun you, uh, bishop c2, and now b5. And this is a pawn sacrifice that, of course, works tactically, because if you take knight takes b5, then queen, uh, queen check, and then the variation would go knight c3 and knight takes c4, and you have problems on c3. Let's say you, you take bishop, take c4, and then bishop takes c3. Pawn takes c3, uh, now you can take here, we check, and black is basically winning. So after knight f3, black needs to play aggressively, and this is one point which you have to remember in the main line of the Makogonov. So after knight f3, don't allow knight d2 to happen, because if this maneuver happens, you are just going to be done, and it's going to be lost, because white is going to have a fairly easy time targeting d6, because this is an improved Benoni for white. So c4 has to be played. Uh, and, I mean, you need to seek activity. If uh, the bishop takes, of course, then e4 is dropping and it's not really simple to defend and you have problems on c3. So the bishop should retreat and keep defense of the e4 pawn. And now b5 cannot be taken. So white's move should be a3. Knight bd7 for black. Still keeping the same threats. Of course, queen check. And now white castles. Now there are no more threats, but now uh, black can increase the pressure on e4 with knight c5. So now if any knight takes b5 happens, then knight e4 is a threat. So still the pawn cannot be taken, the b5 pawn cannot be taken. Rook e1, now once again reinforcing the threat of knight takes b5 and queen b6. So the main team of the main line, Makogonov, after c5, uh, is going to be uh, this c4 maneuver and b5 defense and two pawns hanging, the e4 pawn for white and the b5 pawn for black. And this is going to be the main theme of the opening, which is why I believe that if you want a game which is le less tactical, choose knight a6. If you want to have a position like this, in which something is constantly hanging, then by all means go for c5. Okay, uh, the two other moves I wanted to look at uh, after castles for black is bishop to e3, which is a sideline. Uh, I would recommend the move bishop g5 because it's just uh, more threatening to black. Now black can, of course, continue with e5 because the bishop is not on g5. And now we have this normal structure, d5. Knight a6 by black looking at c5. Knight f3, knight h5, preparing f5. Knight h2, preparing uh, to defend against f5. Queen e8 and pinning uh, because the bishop might still come here and the knight might retreat after uh, the move f5. And preparing to support any attack after the g-pawn eventually moves, if it should move with queen to g6 or queen to h5. Bishop e2, attacking the knight, and now knight f4. Uh, after knight f4, I have to say that this position is 
not theoretical and this is the great thing about it if you want a simple position to play in which pattern recognition is going to be the basis of of your play then choose this choose bishop e3 because it's really not theory heavy it hasn't been analyzed that much and it's probably uh, the least played great move for white in the Makogonov. And here the ideas are going to fight your opponent's ideas. Your ideas are going to fi fight your opponent's ideas. Bishop f3, f5, uh, castles, knight c5, all normal or all, all normal king's Indian stuff. Bishop takes c5, d takes c5. This pawn serves a purpose, stops b4. Uh, a3, preparing b4. Queen e7, defending the pawn, rook b1, once again reinforcing b4 and now a5. And you can see that black has started his attack, white is trying to get his own stuff going on the queen side. And it's very easy to play if you are experienced in the king's Indian. It's thematic. It's, I would say, the only thematic variation of all uh, in the Makogonov. So if you want to play something simple after h3 castles, choose the move bishop e3. If you play uh, the King's Indian with the black pieces and face this, then know that you can have fun, you don't have to remember everything. Okay, and the last variation uh, is when white doesn't delay developing the knight to f3, so after castles, he now develops the knight to f3. And now we have the normal uh, stuff that we usually get in the classical uh, King's Indian, but in a different move order, e5, d5. Uh, I'm sorry, in the Petrosian variation of the classical, this is sort of similar to that. Now black can play the move knight a6, he can play the move knight h5 immediately, he can play the move a5, and I think that's the best move, uh, simply stopping the b4 expansion. But let's look at knight h5 first, because knight h5 is the most direct threat. Knight h5 simply prepares the move f5 and threatens the move knight f4. So one thing that white should remember here uh, is the move g3. After g3, uh, the knight cannot come to, uh, to f4, and now f5. Once f5 happens, generally as white, uh, you should take it uh, in these positions when, when you have only your e4 pawn and not g4. So if f5 happens, e5 as black, you should always capture with the g pawn. g takes f5, and now knight g5. And if anybody is, if anybody is looking aggressive in this variation, I would say it's white. Uh, but I would still prefer bishop g5 to knight f3. And here the only weakness uh, I really like in black's position for white to exploit is the, D, is the e6 weakness. So white is in a situation in which he cannot really trade off his c8 bishop. Because now this, this knight managed to, to, to get to, uh, to g5. h6 is a risky move, leaving a target for white to attack. And leaving uh, an anchor for the g-pawn. So... If white manages to castle queenside and play g5, uh, g4, g5, then black is going to be in trouble. So the knight is going to remain here for a while. Knight f6, g4, uh, just starting an attack, queen e7, and now g takes f5, bishop takes f5, rook g1. And this is uh, the most aggressive variation, uh, which I decided to show you, uh, because if black plays knight h5, then white basically has to go for this. This is the best way to play, and you need to have uh, you need to be prefer prepared for for this with white. But uh, this is the only variation that the engine hates for white. So if I turn on the engine, it's going to be a small advantage for black, which is unheard of, and it happens in maybe one out of ten variations of the king's Indian. So after d5, uh, after d5, if your opponent plays the move knight h5. You just need to go for it. G3 is a risky move. I mean, it's a risky move. But after G3, you sort of gave away your cards, and now you need to go for an attack. F5, EF5, GF5, Knight G5. Go for this. Be aggressive and try to castle queenside at one point. Uh, you gain a tempo because the knight has to retreat, and now use the opportunity to play G4. Queen E7, GF5, Bishop F5, and now Rook G1. And you're basically going all in. After d5, a safer option for black instead of knight h5 is the move knight a6. Now white can still transpose to the line that we saw, and it does transpose bishop g5. So this is the line we were looking at in the main line with bishop g5. Uh, and I, I think that this is better for black, uh, for white, as I said. So I think that bishop g5 should be played in all of these variations, except if your opponent plays the move knight h5, and then you're not going to be able to go for that. And the main line after d5 is the move a5. And a5 is similar to h3, 
it's a waiting move it allows white to decide what he's going to do it makes a stand on the queen side it says i'm not going to be overrun with b4 and basically what are you going to do with the white pieces i just played a5 and after a5 the main response should be bishop g5 uh, once again pinning the knight to the queen and now black can play the move knight a6 and now we can see that it's really hard to play the move b4 and I believe that if white plays knight f3, this should be your weapon of choice and this should be the way you play. So let's go uh, from the top. So d6, h3, the Makogono variation, castles. If white plays the move knight f3, remember these two moves. You need to play e5, white needs to play d5, and now remember the move a5. I think that this is the best way to fight the knight f3 line. Because bishop g5, knight a6. And now you have control over b4 and c5. You can play queen e8, unpinning, you can play knight d7 or knight h5, and then you can play the move f5. So I think this is really comfortable for black. Bishop e2, white has to develop. Queen e8, unpinning. Knight d2, uh, preparing for knight c5, which is about to come in some positions, defending the e4 pawn, preparing to play f3 if need be. And now knight d7, f5 is coming, a3, and now uh, instead of f5... Since the bishop is annoying on g7, black's most popular move here is in fact f6, chasing the bishop away to h4. And uh, I still prefer the move f5. So you can choose whichever, whichever variation you want. After f6, bishop h4, knight b6 is the main move. Uh, and b3, uh, defending the c4 pawn, bishop h6. The point of that was to take over the diagonal, but the problem is, in my opinion, that after f6, the bishop can just retreat to e3. In which case, uh, f5 becomes much stronger. So now f5, white would have to take, takes, and now white would either have to bring his bishop back to g5 and then face the move f4 or be in trouble losing the bishop. So after a3, f6 is an interesting move. It will basically force the bishop to h4, where, I mean, what's the bishop really doing? But f5 has its own merits. I think that f5 is, is much more aggressive, takes, takes. And now we are still threatening the move f4. You have these two strong king's Indian pawns, and you can start an attack. Uh, let's say uh, king h8, uh, rook, g, rook g8, bishop somewhere, uh, knight f6, queen, h, uh, queen g6, and start, start an attack. So I think that this is a much better variation uh, for black. If I turn on the engine, the engine thinks that white is better here, plus one, as in any king's Indian uh, normal position, but after a3, f6, the engine thinks that it's almost equal. It's plus 7, and yeah, now it gets to plus 1, but it's better for black in theory. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is sort of the crucial point, this move 11. Uh, let's just go through the variation once again. So if knight f3, e5, d5, a5, bishop g5, knight a6, bishop e2, queen e8, knight d2, knight d7, this is all very normal, a3, and now you need to decide what you want to do with the black pieces. f6 or f5. If you want a more solid game, sort of misplacing the bishop on h4 or on g3, play f6. If you want to play aggressively and go all in with the black pieces, then choose f5. Okay, uh, to conclude with, uh, after h3, uh, black has to play the move castles. White has three options, bishop e3, bishop g5, or knight f3. I think that bishop g5 is the best option for white, simply because it stops e5, stops the most usual plans for black in the king's indian, and it can be confusing. And another thing is that you have a fairly aggressive setup. It, you can support it with a move g4, uh, and you can be very aggressive. So knight f3, g4, in some positions, as I said, castles queenside, and uh, white should hold a slight edge. So it's understandable why the Makogonov is one of the favorites on the top levels right now. Uh, please let me know what you think. Uh, what do you think about the variation? Have you played it with white? Have you faced it with black? As always, the patrons, my, uh, the patrons are going to get extra material on the variation. I'm going to try to go more in depth and give some example games. Uh, thank you very much for watching uh, and stay tuned for more chess. Thank you. Bye-bye.